All right, welcome back and thank you everyone again. Um, so our next speakers are Anthony Joseph and Debbie Zuckerman. Please welcome them to the stage. They're talking today with us about using comedy as an excuse to play with Python programmed microcontrollers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie. This is Anthony. Hi, I'm Anthony. Uh, so just before we start, I uh, would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country on which we meet to, on today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and recognise their continuing connection to the land, water and the culture. Uh, we also pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So, um, yeah, so I'm Anthony. And, and I'm Debbie. Um, I am not an engineer. I'm not a computer scientist. <laughs> I'm a comedian, um, so the reason I'm here is just because of Anthony. <laughs> I yeah. was at a gig, this is the part where I say that, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, so I was at a gig um, about a year and a half ago and I was doing a character where I do science and it's like real hard hitting, cutting edge science, like mixing vinegar and bicarb and Whoa. And Anthony was like, wow, you're a real scientist. <laughs> anyway, he was talking to me after the show and he, we were talking about science and comedy. And ever since then, Anthony would come to me every few months, like send me a message and say, yo, I have this idea for something you can do on stage. And that escalated when this year in April, he was like, hey, I think we should do a talk at the Python conference. <laughs> I was like, sure. <laughs> I think that's pretty much how it happened, right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I said, about what? And he said, I reckon tech could really be useful for performers. And I said, hey, we've got lights, we've got sound, we have smoke machines, what else do we need? And he said, I think you could use uh, a, theremin. a theremin. Yeah, so I tried to make one and we'll see how this works. So I was going, what was the... Uh, which symphony was it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Anthony's going to play um, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony yes. on the theremin. Yeah, not really working out, is it? <laughs> it's like a cut cross bar. Yeah, I, I couldn't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the next prop he made was this wand. Magic wand. By the power of Greyskull. Uh, uh, Anthony, yeah? you're not wearing a tie. I was going to spin your tie. Oh, yeah, I know, right? I've, but I wore my t-shirt instead, so... Oh. Yeah. I do have a flower, though, that might spin. Okay, great. I'll spin your flower. By the pa oh, yeah. Wait, I have to charge it up. Yes. I have to charge it up. Yeah. yeah. Oh. By the power of Greyskull. Flower flippendo! Yeah, yeah, it kind of worked. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, so that kind of worked. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. do have a question for you. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, that, yeah. it sound. made a sound. <laughs> Does this look like comedy to you? Because at least to... This killed during the, the rehearsals. Like, <laughs> see, at least one gentleman here. It was apparently hilarious. it's comedy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean... Oh, yeah, okay, like I but, said, I'm not uh, an, a tech... Person. I did one year of computer science and looking for bugs. That just, it's not fun. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> neither, neither do I, really. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, so I'm going to throw it to Anthony to explain how all these. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. The most important, we didn't explain the skirt. Yes. Okay, so the skirt will actually light up when you clap. So do you think it's worth a round of applause? Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah. It would have been so good if that actually worked, yeah, right? Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't it work. Never, we couldn't get it to work. And in fact, <laughs> one time it caught on fire, so I'm just going to take it off. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the bad kind of like, you know, uh, thing from the Hunger Games. Yeah. Where the dress goes on fire. No, yeah. Uh, so that's Debbie's view of electronics. Um, she actually oh, sent yeah, me this. This is, this, is my, this is how I feel about electronics, which is why I'm chucking to Anthony to explain but, how these things work or don't work. Don't work. Um, so today I'm just going to give a quick introduction to all the kind of things that uh, we built. So the wand, the spinning flower, sort of spinning flower, the skirt that sort of light, lit up, the theremin, <laughs> and I'm going to introduce a piece of software called QLab and how that could actually relate to a performer's uh, like act. And also try to leave some time for Q&A as well. 
Um, but we're going to go through like the design, some coding examples, because this is a Python conference, uh, and some of the lessons that we learned along the way. So the first bit that we used was the Circuit Playground. So this is made by Adafruit, uh, can be programmed with Python using the Circuit Python uh, libraries. Uh, later on, I ended up using the Adafruit Flora. Uh, these are both wearable devices, kind of purpose built to be sewn into clothing. Uh, there's other things like people I've seen at the previous talks about the micro bits and the, uh, li the lily pad as well, which is another very popular wearable tech. And just on the other side, just to give some reference, there's the classical PC Duino, Arduino style uh, programmable boards. So the magic wand. Um, so the idea is that it required charging, <laughs> charging, like magical charging, not Battery electronic charging. charging. <laughs> uh, so once it's fully charged, it would uh, kind of flash like that and play a sparkle sound if it worked like that, if anyone heard that. <laughs> and if you didn't charge up enough, um, you might hear on the video, yeah, it's very, very faint, but yeah, it kind of makes like this mwah, mwah kind of sound. So uh, we all made this from scratch. So I went and bought a, some pieces of dowel, painted it with acrylic paint, used the circuit playground with some of the near pixel uh, LEDs and used conductive thread and nail polish to connect them together. But it didn't really work out. Um, what ended up happening was the connectors that I tried to do were way too fragile. We had short circuits. It just wasn't working out. So I tried version 2. And version 2 used a strip, a LED strip here instead. And uh, we used the solder. We actually soldered things together, so it actually worked. So if anyone remembers Dick Smith when they used to sell electronics and stuff, I had this from like way back when. I've still got most of it left. Um, sorry? Nice. <laughs> um, but to kind of go into the, the coding of it, uh, one of the things I learned actually building this was thinking in terms of states made the code a lot simpler. So went from like the charging state to the charge sparkling and the charge failed meant I could simplify a lot of the code because I was just uh, programming in the main duty loop uh, how it responds to different states. Um, oh gosh, that code didn't actually come out too great. I promise a lot, it's a lot better to read later on and I put the code on GitHub so I'll leave the address at the end of the time. So I uh, used a library called Fancy LED and that actually simplifies a lot of the code that you might have to do with programming LEDs. So you can, uh, like here, if you can read it, you can just give it like an RGB code and it will tell you, and you'll be able to code like a particular color. But if you want to have like a spectrum of color, like we had like from the red to the green, um, it'll automatically do that interpolation for you, which actually is a lot easier when you actually look to uh, some other coding examples when you want to do like a rainbow style effect. And displaying LEDs is actually pretty simple in CircuitPython. If you just want to set a, a color just like that gold, all you gotta do is just like the pixels.fill, pass in the color, and say pixels.show, and it does it for you. So the libraries take a lot of the heavy lifting out for you. And if you want to do that, do you want pressing the other button? Yeah. Awesome, I love that sound. <laughs> um, just that oscillating effect. All you need to do is just use this uh, fancy.palette lookup, and it automatically figures out all of the colors for you, and you just have that changing every about half a second or so. Playing sounds, like the little sparkle mm -hmm. sound. Um, the circuit Python libraries give a lot already for you, so you just say cpx.play file and just give it a wave file, and it automatically figures it out for you. Pretty cool, at least for me. Uh, also using uh, input as well. Um, there's button A, button B, and they just resolve to true and false in your code. So you can just uh, check those values at any particular point in time, and they can be used to trigger different behavior. So the spinning flower. I thought this was cool at the time, but because uh, spinning tires were a bit too hard, and I'm kind of a bit, didn't want to have anything that spinning that close to my neck. <laughs> so the idea is, is that really simple behavior. Press a button, a servo motor spins. So use the circuit playground again with a little micro servo motor. Uh, and then a little artificial flower that I got from Ikea. So thank you, Ikea. Um, and alligator clips uh, just to connect all the things together. A um, lot of preamble code here. The things that you might be more uh, concerned about is just here where if we call the spin motor function, it just goes through a range of angles and just turns the motor to that. Really, really simple. A lot of this stuff kind of comes out of the box with the uh, circuit playground uh, libraries. Here we but, have a, a confession. 
we have a confession to make. The wand didn't actually spin the flower. Yes, it did not. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <We lost it. laughs> already disappointed already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we actually wanted it to, but it seems like there was limitations in what was available at the time. But... Uh, there's a new version of the Circuit Playground coming out, which has Bluetooth capabilities. So theoretically, we could have it so when Debbie shakes the wand, mm -hmm. it goes and spins wow, flower automatically magic. without me having to very <laughs> unconspicuously run through my pockets to find a button <laughs> to press it to actually make the motor spin. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not the actor here, so I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> okay, so the uh, Scursit Playground, which is a... I, I've had a better name for this before, but the Adafruit website has a lot of really cool like maker examples and one of them was this sparkle skirt. So we wanted to actually have it so it reacted to sound over movement. Um, so we just found a skirt on ASOS. Um, we are still getting the targeted ads for uh, lady skirts. <laughs> so thank you for, <laughs> for that. Um, once again, using the circuit playground, near pixel LEDs and the conductive thread. So here the problem was not the programming, the problem was actually using the conductive thread, <laughs> which is so, it creates so many shorts all the time and you're trying to find where is the short, it's like looking for bugs. <laughs> <laughs> actually like literal bugs, like we actually burnt a nice little hole yeah. in that skirt, um, trying it out, so we almost burnt down a food court, I think, yeah. uh, <laughs> trying this out for the first time. But um, nail polish can be used to... Uh, used to secure joints because the cable itself is pretty slippy in its own right. Um, but yeah, you have to be really careful about the so short circuits because even with like the low voltage, it can still create a spark. Um, but we tried to do a version two with a little bit more safety in it. Um, and we were trying to use the, um, these strips of LEDs again, but uh, I don't think I had enough power in the circuits and we just ran out of time. But yeah, version two. <laughs> um, very, very similar, except very similar in terms of how we got the lights to display, but we were actually using the onboard microphone. And how the onboard microphone would work is that we would sample uh, for a short period of time and then calculate the root mean square of that. Uh, there's a really cool example on the Core Electronics website showing you how to do all this. And then based on that value, you can just sample it down to a particular point where if you get enough sound, it kind of lights up progressively. So at least that was the theory behind it. I promise it works. <laughs> So the theremin, <laughs> this one was a pretty uh, fun one. Uh, the idea was that it would play sound by an onboard speaker. Um, the Circuit Playground has an onboard speaker, or you can use the PWM on that to drive an on external speaker. Uh, and much like with most theremins, it was supposed to change uh, the pitch based on the device movement. So uh, I tried the first version of it, which was the more purest uh, version of it. Um, I affectionately refer to it as the Game Boy falling down the flight of stairs uh, <laughs> because it didn't really work too well. Um, it worked, and, just not very musical. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like expert mode on Dr. Mario or something like that. Um, <laughs> not everything works all the time. I think that was actually a little bit more of a humbling kind of thing for me as well. But it kind of emphasised teamwork as well because. I showed this to Debbie and her partner, Steve, and Steve said, well, why don't you try something different? And I'll show you the code example first uh, before I do that. So basically what I was doing was I was taking in the raw accelerate, the raw readings from the accelerometer, the XYZ movement, and then adding that to a base frequency and then playing that through the, uh, playing that through the audio sound. Um, but when I was talking to Steve about that uh, and Debbie, Steve said, well, why don't you use the chromatic scale? And I was like, yes, I knew that because I did all totally six years. I know what a chromatic scale is. <laughs> I did six years of piano and uh, my parents would be ashamed of me if I didn't learn anything <laughs> from that. Uh, so after a little bit of Googling later, um, we ended up with the version two, which ended up showing like this and something else has come up on the screen. So this is the one that I was actually trying to play. So, and the sound isn't coming out, so. Apologies for that. But this one actually had the light changing depending on what note was being played. So red being like the lowest uh, C and going up in increments. Uh, sorry about that, video didn't work. Um, and this one here actually ended up having a little lookup table that would go and show uh, what the note was and the color as well. And the code would just look that up based on only one axis though this time, the X 
access. So we just use that to look that up. So. Um, ah. Um, this is me doing comedy. <laughs> this is not technical and I can't remember what I was supposed to say with this slide. Uh, right, okay, so these props might be totally hilarious. Might but, be. <laughs> but um, then we were talking about something that's actually really practical, that would be practically useful for performers. There's a program called QLab uh, that most independent performers use probably all over the world. And it basically just lines up all your cues and like your light cues, your sound cues, and then when you give it to a tech, they can just hit the next cue. Now the thing is, when you're at a festival, like a fringe festival or a comedy festival, the tech has never seen your show. Like maybe you get to spend an hour with the tech while they like go, okay, when do I do that cue? But if you could cue your own stuff from the stage just by going, ah, and then the lights change, that would be amazing, because <laughs> everything would happen on time. <laughs> it would be amazing, it would, it certainly would. And QLab itself, uh, made by Figo53, they have a iOS remote. So not only can it be controlled but from a Mac, it can be controlled from an iOS device. But I thought, let's try to take this a little bit further. Let's see whether we can do uh, something with the wearable tech. So I used the Adafruit Flora for this one, mainly because we didn't have Bluetooth comms on the Circuit Playground. And we used the Flora's Bluetooth chip uh, and some push buttons just to prove the concept. So here's a video I've made, and so this is like a MacBook running separately, and what's happening is the MacBook thinks it's pairing to a keyboard, but in reality it's the Flora uh, on the button bottom. So here if I press a button, <laughs> if you told a bad joke, uh, you can just have an audience applauding anyways, <laughs> because I'm like that, right? <laughs> um, and so what has happened is when you press a button, the Flora is sending out a B press, and this is if you tell a good joke, you have the rim shot. Uh, it press the letter B and QLab recognizes the, the button B being pressed and it triggers the sound effect. So something very, very simple just to kind of prove that we can kind of get these communications happening and we can get QLab triggered from something other than a keyboard. So I don't want to kind of go into too much of Arduino code, but basically all that was happening was we ended up just using this uh, Bluetooth print and we ended up just printing out uh, ASCII characters or like the hex representation of it. So all the MacBook thinks is that someone's pressing a letter B and then letting go. Um, but yeah, so that, that's our that's talk it. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually went to see the uh, Debbie's Troop, Choo Choo Troop perform <laughs> last week or the week before, was the it? week before. Oh, last week. Last oh, week, oh, yes. I couldn't remember. T time flies, right? <laughs> yeah. So, and they have the Lost Lost. Uh, yes. Cabaret, which is a lot of fun. If I, I feel a bit confident. Come. So go along and. Uh, you can see QLab in action. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I figured we'll have like a little bit extra Q and A time, just so if you want to ask Debbie any questions. Or oh, Anthony any questions. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, all right, so we have a speaker appreciation gifts for oh, you awesome. both, Thank you. a little mug. Um, so <laughs> awesome. if you have a question you. in the audience, can I get you to put your hand up? We'll come around with a microphone. Uh, who would like to go first? Uh, here we have one question. Hi, uh, for your Bluetooth library, what were you using? Is that standard, is that core in the Arduino or was it an extra? Uh, yeah, so I forgot the, li the exact library. I do have the source code on GitHub, so that's going to, um, um, so if you do take a photo of it, it does have that, but I wasn't using anything special. It was just the, um, I guess the extra Adafruit um, Bluetooth uh, libraries. Uh, that would uh, do that. So yeah, not, no special trickery at all. Uh, they actually have a really good like example on the website that kind of shows doing that comms, but I kind of stripped a lot of it out, so it just worked standalone. Hey, the uh, theremin was really cool. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> have you thought about combining two of them and then replicating the actual behavior of a real theremin rather than just the chromatic scale with X, Y, Z? That would be awesome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like, because we kind of like, we were kind of experimenting with a whole bunch of technology, and this is kind of the ones that kind of made the short list. I like how you say we. We, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, mainly me doing like crazy ideas and kind of saying, like, would this work? <laughs> and I mean, like, and also, like, I guess from a tech kind of meeting, comedy kind of point of view, that collaboration really works when you, everyone's kind of talking with each other, like, hey, does this work? Would this work well on stage? Like, oh, no, this is actually how it works in the real world. So, um, yeah, so I think it's pretty two. cool. Phase two, <laughs> version three. <Yeah. laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, just while the, if anyone is still thinking of a question, I have a question. Um, yep. Can you tell us uh, if you about any performances you might have used these props in so far, or what you might be planning? Uh, well, up. actually, what I <laughs> wanted Anthony to make <laughs> was some boxing gloves that when you punch, they go like thwack. Pow! <laughs> Wham! And then sometimes they would just go wah wah. And I don't know. I, I just thought that would be. I don't know what the whole show would be, but a boxer that does that. <laughs> but he didn't make it. I <laughs> try my best. <laughs> but I mean, like as you can kind of see, we can actually combine a whole bunch of different like of the standalone parts to actually probably make that as well. Yeah. So we could probably use QLab to cue the audio files remotely and embed those, the uh, like the flora, yeah. into like a whole big of like, you know, <laughs> oversized boxing gloves or something <laughs> like that. That sounds very entertaining and it's possibly like next year's Python uh, <laughs> yeah, <right>. proposal <laughs> right there. Um, so if we, there aren't any more questions from the audience, uh, we might leave it there. If uh, you're interested in MicroPython in particular, I think we have quite a few other talks and maybe an open space. Um, there's a lot of discussion happening on Slack. Uh, this has been fascinating. So let's thank our speakers one more time. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>